Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today's episode focuses on how iron overload can significantly increase stroke-related injury. Strokes are often understood as a blockage of blood flow to the brain, but new insights reveal specific ways cells die during and after these events. We'll break down the recent findings, emphasize why checking your iron levels matters, and discuss how you can keep those levels in a safer range. Joining me is my co-host, Ilara Skye. She's here to help us dig into these details and explain them in a clear, practical way. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad to be here. Strokes are a major cause of death and disability worldwide and the damage can ripple through all aspects of life. The latest research points to multiple mechanisms by which cells are lost when a stroke interrupts blood flow. This includes a set of processes collectively known as programmed cell death. Within that framework, one of the most critical findings is the role of iron overload. When there's too much iron in the brain, it accelerates the loss of brain cells. This knowledge can guide us to strategies that reduce stroke severity and improve outcomes. Let's start with an overview of what happens in the brain during a stroke. Typically, an ischemic stroke blocks blood flow, cutting off oxygen and nutrients. As cells are deprived of these essentials, they begin to die. Researchers have identified three main modes of cell death during an ischemic stroke. There's one triggered by excess iron accumulation, another that rapidly spreads damage through the tissue, and a more orderly process that removes cells in a structured manner. Recognizing these distinct processes is a step toward interventions that might target them specifically. Yes, and the first of these modes is especially concerning when iron levels are high. Excess iron can worsen the loss of brain cells because it interacts with other harmful processes. When the stroke occurs, the blood-brain barrier can become more permeable. That barrier normally protects the brain, but once it's compromised, more iron can rush in. The presence of too much iron then drives further damage, affecting cell structures and contributing to a more severe outcome. The encouraging news is that drugs or strategies limiting iron have shown promise in preliminary studies. Iron is essential for many bodily functions, including the transport of oxygen in our blood. However, the research suggests that too much of it sets the stage for more serious brain injury. Dr. Mercola's analysis highlights how this iron-related cell death once triggered, can spread. This knowledge has led to questions about how we can measure and manage iron levels to help protect our brains. One key tool mentioned is the serum ferritin test. Could you explain how that works and what levels we should aim for? A serum ferritin test measures stored iron in the body. It's a straightforward blood test, and knowing your level can guide you on whether you have too much or too little iron. A result below 100 nanograms per milliliter is generally recommended with an ideal range around 20 to 40 nanograms per milliliter. If ferritin levels climb too high, it indicates that your body is storing more iron than it needs. This excess can be especially risky if you face any event that compromises blood flow to the brain, like an ischemic stroke. Monitoring these levels is one way to avoid the heightened damage that comes with iron overload. Keeping our iron in a healthy range might sound straightforward, but many people don't realize they've built up excess iron. When the body doesn't effectively rid itself of surplus iron, these levels creep upward over time. One question people often ask is how exactly to reduce high iron levels if a blood test shows a number above 100. The simplest recommendation in Dr. Mercola's work is donating blood. Could you walk us through why regular blood donation helps keep stroke risk in check? Absolutely. Donating blood is an efficient way to remove iron from the body because each donation takes away a specific amount of red blood cells and with them, stored iron. Doing this two to four times a year can significantly reduce iron overload. Some people prefer more frequent, smaller volume donations each month, which can also work. The method remains the same. By regularly shedding blood, you limit the buildup of iron stores, minimizing the potential for damage if you ever experience a stroke. If someone has underlying conditions like congestive heart failure or severe lung disease, it's important for them to speak to a physician before initiating any blood donation routine. Listeners might wonder if there are alternatives if donating blood isn't feasible for them. 
Some individuals have conditions preventing them from giving blood at a donation center. Dr. Mercola mentions a procedure called therapeutic phlebotomy, which is medically supervised blood removal. It's basically the same principle of decreasing blood volume to bring down stored iron, but it's done under a doctor's care. Maintaining safe iron levels appears to be an important part of lowering stroke risk and limiting stroke-related injury. That's correct. Another approach to lowering stroke risk involves lifestyle adjustments. While the focus here is on iron, other measures like staying active, managing blood pressure, and opting for a whole food-based diet are also crucial. Processed foods often contain damaging fats and other additives, which can exacerbate inflammation and stress in the body. In addition, maintaining good circulation with regular exercise, such as brisk walking, ensures that the brain receives proper oxygen and nutrients. All these measures work together to keep the brain healthier in the long term. Let's address some of the common questions people have about iron and stroke. One is why too much iron is specifically harmful during a stroke. The research shows that iron boosts the extent of cell death once the stroke occurs, effectively amplifying the harm. Another frequent question is how iron directly causes brain cells to break down. Scientists have identified a specific chain of events in which iron disrupts normal cell functions. The high levels eventually overwhelm cell protections, leading to cell death that goes beyond what a standard stroke might cause. Yes, and to expand on that, in an ischemic stroke, the brain is already vulnerable because of reduced blood flow. When excess iron is introduced, more cells die because iron triggers a breakdown in cell membranes and other vital components. Some of these processes can initiate what researchers call programmed cell death. This isn't a random event, but a biological sequence that damages brain tissue more severely. Scientists are looking at therapies that block iron's destructive influence, though these are still under investigation. Another question I get is whether there are new stroke treatments that focus on iron-related damage. According to Dr. Mercola's analysis, emerging therapies might combine strategies to block different types of cell death in the brain. If researchers can successfully inhibit iron-driven cell destruction, plus the other forms of cell damage, stroke outcomes could improve. This concept still requires further clinical trials, but the potential is exciting. It suggests a future where stroke care could involve precise targeting of these destructive processes in real time. Exactly. If scientists find ways to intervene early, before cells succumb to iron-related damage, there's a chance of preserving more brain function. Time is a critical factor. Most treatments for ischemic stroke center on restoring blood flow as quickly as possible, typically through clot-busting drugs or procedures. Adding an iron-targeted therapy could address an underlying mechanism that continues even after blood flow is reestablished. It's not a cure-all yet, but it represents a new frontier in stroke management, with a strong rationale based on current findings. Until such therapies become widely available, prevention and early intervention remain our best strategies. Regularly checking serum ferritin levels, donating blood if levels are high, and keeping a balanced diet can reduce the risk of a severe stroke outcome. I also recommend staying alert to any warning signs of a stroke, such as sudden numbness in the face or limbs, confusion, difficulty speaking, or trouble seeing. Acting quickly at the first sign of a stroke is essential. That's a vital point. While this discussion highlights iron as a powerful factor, it's only one aspect of overall stroke prevention. Maintaining healthy blood pressure, controlling inflammation, and avoiding excessive exposure to harmful fats or chemicals are also key parts of the bigger picture. If you discover your ferritin levels exceed 100 nanograms per milliliter, consider taking immediate steps to reduce your stores. This is especially important because a significant stroke event can be devastating, but limiting excess iron may offer a measure of protection against cell death. Dr. Mercola's work underscores how iron overload isn't just an isolated concern. It connects to broader cardiovascular health and neurological protection. People often ask if simply keeping iron within normal limits can keep them from ever having a stroke. It's not a guarantee against a stroke, but evidence suggests that appropriate ferritin levels can reduce the risk and possibly lessen the severity if a stroke does occur. It's one of the few modifiable factors we have, which makes it worth paying attention to. Precisely. We can't prevent every stroke, but by addressing factors within our control, 
we shift the odds in our favor. Keeping iron levels healthy is relatively straightforward. The process starts by asking your healthcare provider for a serum ferritin test. Should the number come back high, you can discuss blood donation or therapeutic phlebotomy. Pair that with positive lifestyle habits, avoiding processed foods, staying active, and tracking blood pressure, and you create a supportive environment for your brain. Well, that wraps up our exploration of how iron overload can worsen stroke-related injury. We've covered the importance of monitoring ferritin levels, how blood donation can help, and why stroke prevention strategies should include managing iron. These discoveries show that we have more power than we realize when it comes to mitigating stroke damage. Thank you, Alara, for guiding us through these critical points. Thank you, Ethan. It's always encouraging to share information that can make a tangible difference in people's lives. We hope today's discussion equips everyone with the knowledge to review their iron levels and consider proactive steps. Developing a plan to keep iron in a safer range can help protect your brain health. Keep learning about your health and exploring ways to optimize it. We'll be back next time with more insights. Until then, stay informed and take the steps that support your well-being. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.